How do we yes. know, like, the authors of the Gospels and the epistles? But least, you have what's called church history. For example, you have someone named Irene, and this is the system that Muslims use to try to prove their chains of transmission called the Isnat Senat. There's a man called Irenaeus. Irenaeus was the bishop of the church in Lyon, France, and he wrote around 170 AD, and he was martyred. Mm -hmm. Irenaeus, a disciple of Polycarp. Polycarp was the bishop of the church at Smyrna. Polycarp was a disciple of the apostles, and he met with them and spoke with them like John. Now you see the unbroken chain? Mm -hmm. You have the apostles, John, their disciple, Polycarp, a bishop who at the age of 86 was martyred, burned alive and killed because he wouldn't deny Jesus. And his disciple, Irenaeus, who was a bishop in France, and he too died as a martyr, and they all died as martyrs gladly. Yes. Irenaeus says, Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke and Acts, and John wrote John. This is an unbroken chain from Polycarp, from John, and there is no reason why we should belie or doubt his testimony because second line of evidence there's not a single shred of manuscript evidence where you find any copy of the gospels any manuscript you find that has the first page every single one has the gospel according to matthew the gospel according to mark the gospel according to luke you do not find any competing conflicting names for the authorship of the gospels that's the second line of evidence mm -hmm. third line of evidence why would the christians make up the names luke and mark as two Two of the authors of the four Gospels, when Luke and Mark were unknown. The only reason why they became famous is because Gospels were attributed to them. If no Gospels were attributed to them, no one would be talking about Mark and Luke. If the church is making up names, you would think they would want to attach the name of a more prominent follower of Christ, right? Yeah. Why Mark? The only reason why we talk about Mark is his Gospel attributed to him. If there was no Gospel attributed to Mark, no one would be talking of Mark. So if they're making up a name, why didn't they say Peter wrote it? Because according to tradition, Mark was writing down what Peter preached. So why not simply say Peter wrote it if know. they're making up names? Acts 4, 13, I think it was that one, says that, you know, both Peter and John were... You know, you're, you're really desperate and pathetic to quote Acts 4, 13 because it says they were uneducated. See, again, shows me that you're either lying to me because you are parroting arguments after you rejected Christianity... Or you really didn't know Jesus because you fell for such stupid arguments. I know the word uneducated. Do you know what it meant in its historical context? No, what did it mean? See, there you go again. Why are you parroting arguments without then searching for the answers? Because I know what you're referring to. Acts 4.13. And they noted that these were uneducated, unskilled men, and they followed Jesus. See, I even know the verse you're quoting. But unlike you, I didn't turn my back in Jesus. I went and found the answer. Uneducated means they were not formally trained by any rabbis. Hmm. But how could they be uneducated when they're fishermen? Are you aware for you to be a fisherman, you're going to buy and sell and you have to write tax receipts. That means you have to have some form of literacy. Yeah, that makes sense. So why is it I found the answer and you instead, this answer convinced you to reject the authorship of the Gospels? I was told that you, illiterate. That word is not illiterate. The word is uneducated, meaning not trained by any rabbi. They were not taught by rabbis because they were fishermen. But last time I checked, if you're a fisherman, you're buying and selling, and you have to have tax receipts for the transactions, right? Yeah. And last time I checked, Galilee is called Galilee of the Gentiles. That means Peter and John, contrary to what Ehrman says, would be interacting with Gentiles as they're selling and buying fish. And so they're going to be stupid. They can't write. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, I thought, well, you know, they must have at least known like um, Hebrew, but maybe not Greek. Let's go with that. They didn't know Greek. You mean later on after they convert, they couldn't learn Greek? Just like you're trying to learn Arabic. So they remain stupid and uneducated all their life. So after with Jesus, they didn't say, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to learn Greek so I can reach the Greeks. So you're zealous to learn Arabic, but they wouldn't be zealous to learn Greek later on? You're kidding, right? Yeah, that's what I thought, brother. But you didn't answer the question. If they're making up names, why attribute Luke and Acts to Luke when Luke is an unknown? Nobody knows Luke. The only reason why you know Luke is because the gospel is attributed to him. Why didn't they say Thomas wrote it? Or why didn't they say Bartholomew wrote it? Or Philip, one of the 12. Why attribute two writings to an unknown named Luke? And the only reason why you know about him is because these writings are attributed to him. In other words, if they're making up names, the smart thing to do is make up names of prominent figures, not some Joe Schmo that nobody knows, and attribute the writings to this nobody, and that nobody only becomes famous after the fact because writings are attributed to him. You never thought about these points, brother? No, not really. There was also um, another argument.
the Didache, whenever it refers to the gospel, it doesn't say the gospel of Matthew, but it just says the gospel. Why would it need to say the gospel of Matthew when it's writing to an audience who know what gospel is being cited? For example, Paul in 1 Timothy 5.18 says, For the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox when it's treading out the grain. So now using your logic, he didn't say Moses wrote it. Therefore, that means Moses didn't write it. You see how silly that argument is? Yeah. Does Paul need to say that Moses wrote that scripture when he's writing to people already familiar with the scripture, that he knows that this citation is from Moses? Does he have to spell it out every time? Or he can say, hey, you know the scripture, the law says, do not muzzle an ox while treading out grain. Oh, by the way, I have to say Moses, because if I don't say Moses, then this guy's going to come and question whether Moses wrote it. But did you know in that citation, Paul also quotes Luke's gospel as scripture? No. In 1 Timothy 5.18, Paul quotes two books, combines them together as scripture. The first is Deuteronomy 25, 4. For the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it's treading out the grain. That's Deuteronomy 25, verse 4. And the laborer, some translations say worker, is worthy of his wages. That second citation is word for word, verbatim, identical to Luke 10, 7. Wow. Uh, Luke 10, 7 says, and remain in the same house eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer deserves his wages now read first timothy 5 18 and what does paul quote for the scripture says you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain and the laborer deserves his wages it is identical with luke now trenton do you know why paul quotes luke's gospel oh uh, because he sees that as scripture yeah, it's scripture, but why not quote Matthew? Because Matthew says something similar, not identical, because they're translating Jesus' words in Greek. Do you know why he quotes Luke's version? Because yeah. Luke is with him, 2 Timothy 4.11. So Luke is with him. It makes sense. He's going to quote Luke's gospel because Luke is with him. So he's going to quote Luke's gospel. And Luke is not an apostle, but a Gentile follower of Paul. And yet an apostle confirms that Luke wrote scripture because he wrote down the words of jesus but now if i follow your logic well he didn't say luke so it can't be luke luke alone is with me get mark and bring him with you for he is very useful to me for ministry is it a coincidence trenton two of the men he mentioned have two gospels attributed to them luke alone is with me bring mark luke who wrote luke and acts and mark who wrote mark so now does it make sense, Trenton, that in his first letter, Paul would quote Luke's gospel and call it scripture on the level of Moses when he knew Luke was writing down the words of Jesus? Yeah, I guess you'd argue for the um, early dating of the gospels as well, like before 70. The evidence from Luke and Acts shows it's early. How do I know? In the book of Acts, Luke mentions the martyrdom of Stephen, who was the one of the first seven deacons. And he mentions James, John's brother, being murdered in Acts 12, 1 and 2. And yet the prominent figures of his book are Peter and Paul and James, the Lord's brother. And he already recorded Jesus' prophecy of destruction of Jerusalem. Had these individuals been martyred and the temple destroyed, then it would be most likely that he would include them. But he ends his writing with Paul in house arrest in Rome for two years. Well, that only makes sense if Luke is writing before James, the brother of the Lord, was killed, before Peter was martyred, and before Paul was martyred. They were still alive when he wrote, which means he must have been writing before 62 AD because extra biblical sources say James was martyred around 62 AD and Paul and Peter around 64 to 68 AD. And then on top of that, you have Luke mentioning himself as an eyewitness to many of these events. Did you know that? No, I thought it was, um, okay, you know, sure. he was saying... Well, here, I'm, he's going to show you. Read from Acts 16, 14 to 18. When you start from Acts 16, 14 all the way on, you're going to hear the writer saying, us, we, our, including himself as an eyewitness to these events with Paul and the rest, and that he met James, the so-called brother of the Lord. But read Acts 16, 14, 18, the first reference to Luke being an eyewitness to the events he's recording. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia. Did you hear the, did you hear the word us? Yeah. So that means the writer saying I was there, right? Mm -hmm. From the city of Ayatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized in her household as well, she urged us, saying, Us. 
She mm -hmm. urged us. I was yeah. there with Paul. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. As we, as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought, we her, were met. Uh, brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. So he's a witness to this miracle. And she testified that all of them, Luke included, are servants of the most high God. And he saw Paul do a miracle in the name of Jesus, cast out a demon in the name of Jesus. I like you to cast out a demon in the name of Muhammad. See how how well that goes for you. But the final example I want to give you: Acts twenty-one, read eight to eighteen. This is actually the chapter Acts twenty-one where um, Paul visits uh, James while he's leading Jerusalem. And you, and you trust that as historically accurate, right? I was just looking at That's it. What I'm saying you trust that as historically accurate, right? Because it's going to bury Muhammad. Because if you trust this as historically accurate. Then you're going to have to trust what Luke says, that Jesus claimed to be God, did miracles, was killed for our sins, raised from the dead, physically, bodily, reigning from heaven. He is Lord, and Muhammad is dead and buried in hell. So thank you. I'm glad you agree. Now come back to Jesus. Read Acts 28, 8 to 18. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Selectively quote Acts to try to condemn Paul when Acts condemns your prophet Muhammad to the pit of hell where he belongs. Okay, now watch the plural pronouns. Acts 21, 8 to 18. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit. This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart. For I am ready not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is the man you want to condemn for Muhammad who's in hell. But keep going. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready. And we got to ready to go where? To Jerusalem. Okay. And what did and they do when they got there? Some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Manasin of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. Now notice Luke claims to be an eyewitness to James, the Bishop of Jerusalem, so-called brother of Christ. And he met him and met the elders and accompanied Paul. And it was an eyewitness to many of the events and miracles he saw, proving that Jesus is a son of God, born of the Virgin, died for our sins, raised physically, ascended physically into heaven, and reigns as Lord over heaven and earth. So let's ignore all this, and let's go with Muhammad. Yep, I think you heard enough truth for you to come back to Christ and say, you know what, bye-bye, Muhammad, I made a mistake.